Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger, what up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe. While we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. And welcome, hello, to Geek Enders. Whoa! With Ashley. Ah! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what a start! What a great! You know what? That was great. That was good. It was a solid okay. show already. I agree. Yep. Welcome, everybody. Hello. We're back with more geek ending. It's Pug Man. I guess that's no one has us. no one has any oh, man. No <laughs> this one is has the any problem. reference for that. This is the problem with doing live pre-show and sound check is that goofs get developed and then they carry through. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, yeah. I'm man. <laughs> there you go. This is how, this is how he talks because he can't breathe. Right? That's the joke. That that's, was the whole joke. That was the joke. We're all caught up. <laughs> We're all here. Welcome. Welcome to the vibe, everyone. Uh, yeah, look, you could have, instead of explaining it, been like, well, God, guess you just have to be there for when it's recorded. Oh, Tux hair. Way better at this than me. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been here live, you baby. Yeah, should have been here live. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, no. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Good. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm just I'm having a nice, beautiful day. The sun is shining. Jesse, how are you doing, Bestie? <laughs> oh, I'm having a nice, beautiful day. The sun is shining. I oh. think I can't see it. It's early here. <laughs> it Hi, everyone. Be. Um, Ashley informed me that she specifically wore the shirt mm-hmm. for you. I did. I did wear the shirt. Can you tell what the shirt is? I can't see the shirt. Can you see the shirt? Oops, sorry. Uh, I see what looks like a deer. Yeah. Is it deer fest? It's deer fest, Jesse. (laughs) I love, you know what? It's one of my favorite festivals and one of the top 10 quaintest towns in the United States. (laughs) Yeah. True. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's great. It was voted in the top 10 quaintest towns. Dukes, it's deer fest is great. I believe it. Yeah. I, you got to go stop by uh, the Oh Dear Diner. Get yourself mm-hmm. a nice cup of Joe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually yeah. have a souvenir mug. I have a mug from Oh Dear Diner downstairs. So do I. Is it the That's same right. mug? It probably is. Probably. Let's be real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love... <laughs> I love that the the Alan Wake merch you have is like really great shirt. That's like subtle and it's the it's the deer fest. The one that I have is a black shirt mm. with like blood stains on it. In the back, it's like this like cryptic riddle. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is cool as shit. And every time I wear it, people are like, what does that mean, dude? I'm like, it's from the game it. Alan Wake, and I have to explain it. Mm. No one's asking to explain your shirt. Me, they're oh, like, yeah. what are you? Are you in a cult? What does this I say? Mean, well, I have the monsters have many faces shirt too. That's what it is. That what yours says? Yes. Yeah. 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 I have that one too. But this one is. I just love Deer Fest. It's near and dear to me. But yeah, yeah. this yeah, is yeah, the yeah. one I like more a little bit more because the other mm. one looks very culty. I mean, obviously. <laughs> I would assume because I don't know shit about Alan Wake. I would assume mm. that mm-hmm. that shirt was just like. Uh, a screen cap from an old movie or sure. Uh, sure. maybe the image that was used on the inside paper of a CD at some point. You know, oh, yeah. 
Like, yeah, it, mm-hmm. I could I could make some assumptions about that and not feel like I needed to ask. Yeah. So that, I assume like the other of a good shirt. shirt. I, yeah, I assume mm-hmm. the other shirt inspires people to be like, huh? The other shirt literally, I believe, has a man made out of blood with a deer mask on. Right. Staring directly at you. So, you know. Yes. Yeah, that's a little the culty. Is, yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah. It's a little but different. The thing than is, mine. that's the point. The point is, it is a cult. It's not wrong. Mm-mm. Sure. But, uh, Dukes, you know what? For you, I may be, uh-huh. no joke, working on the most in depth video of my life. That is a complete is it about Remedy Alan verse Wake? video. <laughs> it's all of it. Oh, it's about it's the, whole, it. the whole universe. Yeah. I see. But, but <laughs> it's done in the style of me being the guy responsible for training new Federal Bureau of Control recruits. I love that. That's so good. And I'm, I'm literally, I'm not even joking. I uh, Years ago, when we did our control review, mm-hmm. Courtney Hope was in that review. I remember. So I reached out again like, yo, will you be a part of my goofy video? And she was like, maybe. <laughs> so now we are 100. I'm going to make this. I'm going to like play videos like at crappy teachers. Like, all right, so here's this video. Um, it's going to be so good and require so much time. <laughs> Look, I love it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. If you happen to have, if, if a certain uh, robot O has any sort of high inclination to be in that video, let Please me know. God. It's, it's anything be I ever want. The culmination Just, of years of work. I'm getting an Alan Wake tattoo in less than a month. So, Ooh, what's, <laughs> oh it gonna, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Um, so I have like this like sleeve with like, there's only two things, but it's like just creepy. I have like Bloodborne and Silent Hill, but I think I'm going to get like the clicker, like surrounded by a bunch of like creepy forest stuff. Like I've got like ferns and stuff. So I just want it to be the clicker. So it's like really chill and subdued, but yeah. Can I see your other tattoos? Uh I can sure try to show you. So, oh God, I have to show this one to you upside down. That's okay. Um, It's like. The messengers from Bloodborne. Yes, good. and then this is just a pyramid head with a bunch of like mushrooms and ferns and things. Oh, cool! Yeah. Are mushrooms and ferns your emotional purgatory? Is that why pyramid heads there? <laughs> yeah, you're stuck. You're stuck around mushrooms and ferns. Yeah, that's now. Yeah. Are they yeah. sexy mushrooms and ferns? Because everything's sexy for some reason in Silent Hill, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, it depends on who's on whose hill it is right some of these look I mean, kind of like titties so that could work <laughs> yeah no that'd be like mushrooms with like but like mushrooms that it have mushrooms like you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. no face you can, they can't no have face. a face no, no face. face just boobs <laughs> yeah their face no is face, also another boobs. mushroom for some reason mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. the mushrooms yeah. are boobs got it right yeah, yeah everything yeah. is, everything yes, is yes. boobs but also mushrooms mm-hmm. yeah. perfect there it is mm-hmm. we're really designing my own uh other world we'd love to see it <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. when the fog creeps in and you see that big mushroomed mushroom come at you you're gonna be like oh, he was right oh my god <laughs> yeah, yeah um do you the uh do you have like a specific person that you go to for tattoos or do you try to go to a different person each time i have been tattooed by three people but 90 percent of my tattoos are by the same person and she's doing like my whole sleeve nice. i feel like i got a like my first tattoo is like here and it's huge. Um, and it like a lot of the line work is it's like thicker left, like, like raised mm-hmm. lines. Yeah. But, which I'm like, okay, yeah. Tattoos, you can feel them. But then I started getting tattooed by her and you can't at all because she's just so gentle. So I'm like, maybe I just want that now forever. So yeah, just- I have, yes, I have a, a tattoo here that I got when I was in college and, um, and I was like, yeah, it's, it's nice. I like it. It was the same sort of a thing. It was like, I have no problem with this. And then I got tattooed by someone else who, who really had like a deft hand with it. And I was like, oh, there's a huge difference. There's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. Question. Yes. Yeah. Is it because location or is it because of the person? Because both of you said, I got tattooed somewhere on my body. Mm. And then you pointed to your arms. They were like, but then I got tattooed. It was great. And I'm like, well, is it the body different than the arm? 
I think it can be both because I think it can I'm, be both, I'm but... not, I'm not a tattoo artist, but I love to watch tattooing shows. And from, mm-hmm. from what I understand, um, like there are certain parts of the body that are more difficult to tattoo. Um, but, uh, if you sort of like go too hard in one spot, you can sort of like inflame the skin and the, and the, there'll be like blowout. The lines won't be as crisp, you know, things like that. And it'll, Mm. it'll, um, have more of an effect on your skin just in general in that spot. I, be- yeah. I, I don't know if I, there's probably a tattoo artist who's watching right now. That's like, that, that's not how I would explain that, but I did my best. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think it's definitely location, but also like line thickness and just how aggressive the tattoo artist can be. But I feel like from what I talked to, cause I talked to my artist and also the person who owns the shop that I get tattooed at now and he even said that, like, my tattoo artist is super gentle and mm. won't and doesn't really, like, leave, like, scarring, really. Which is... That's awesome. It seems like a... <laughs> like, is that something you could know? Go- I don't have tattoos. And I, mm-hmm. I, I exist under the, the idea that, one, I would end up getting a tattoo that five years later I hated, which is true of most things in my life where I'm like, this is my favorite thing. And then five years, I'm like, God, I hate that. Mm. Right? Or mm. I would go to a tattoo artist and I've seen both good and bad tattoos. And I know I'd go to a guy whose name was like Thrash Metal Men. And he'd be like, yeah, dude, I'm the best one in the city. And then I end up with a tattoo that looks like a doodle. And I'm like, <laughs> cool. Glad I got that mm. trash. So I, I have not pulled a trigger, but I would if it was cool. But I haven't because I am a scaredy boy. That's fine. Mm. That's fine. You just got to research. So like, how do you know going in? That is that is good. Portfolio. That's a good person. Yeah. It's going to give you a good tattoo. That's something that you're going to end up wanting. You look at all their stuff. <laughs> yeah. You, you like really research the person before you go to them. Um, yeah. And sometimes uh, the tattoos that they put on their Instagram or whatever look really great, but their reviews are bad. Like the people who mm-hmm. go to them don't have a good experience with them. Their bedside manner is bad, whatever. So it's it's a lot of like research (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. so fortunately we live in a world where just about anybody who has a business you can go online and be like how do people feel about this (laughs) what was what was their experience with this person you know so you don't as as a as you know a tattoo artist or whatever you don't have as much like control over the narrative so to speak you know like You can you can find other opinions. Now, are most tattoo artists comfortable with giving uh, dudes tramp stamps? How do they feel about that? Because that's what I I want. I think most of them would be fine with that. Yeah, I want like a big, massive butt masterpiece. Okay, like what is it going to be above my ass and goes Mm -hmm. down? Uh, Sephiroth wings. It goes down my my butt. Okay, Mm -hmm. but only one. Only one goes down my butt. One. And then on the other butt cheek is the entire cast of Final Fantasy VII going. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's wild. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's it. it. I think that's the one. That's I think like so the too. first and only tattoo you ever get is just like yeah, one yeah. breath wing. <laughs> and then going down the back of my legs. You know how some people get those tattooed like uh, the lacy things in the back of their legs yeah. or like ribbons. Yeah. yeah. Mine's gonna be da 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 down my back of my legs. It's just gonna say duh. Duh, 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 duh. Okay, yeah. I like it. Yeah, yes. with little musical <laughs> okay. notes, so you know it's a song. Of course, yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> and if you're a Final Fantasy happen. person, you'd get it. Yeah, yeah, it checks out. Yeah, this is a hell of a tramp stamp. It started out as a tramp stamp, and it I is don't think this counts really mouth. as a tramp stamp. It's it's just a butt <laughs> masterpiece that also happens to be in the tramp stamp location. Mm-hmm. That's right, mm-hmm. Jesse Cox butt masterpiece. Butt masterpiece. <laughs> Da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Sorry, what? Now do nut. Nut. There we go. There we go. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nut. Nice. Yeah. Nut. Don't worry, Dodger. We're all over the same page. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I would never not do nut. When nut. does? Oh. When does uh rebirth come out? Soon. Next. Right? Thursday, like, Friday, one of them, the 29th. Very soon. <laughs> very soon. Yeah. I um, mm-hmm. I just want to say, 
I made the terrible mistake, Uh-oh. terrible mistake, yeah, of deciding to catch up because there's a few games that I haven't played in the Final mm-hmm. Fantasy VII universe, and I haven't played sure. the Yuffie game that came out after Final Fantasy VII remake. So that's oh, on the yeah. list. I haven't played that Before, either. Yeah, I was like, I got to play it. Apparently, it is very important to what's coming. But then I thought. I've, I've never played Crisis Core. I never owned a PSP. Uh, I don't know anything about Crisis Core, except that I know the story is the Zack and Cloud right. meeting, get together. Here's what I didn't know. Mm. The game is insane. <laughs> it's one of the most insane games I've ever played in my entire mm-hmm. life. Okay. Yeah. The dialogue and story is out of... Dodger, there's yeah. a moment I'm going to reenact for you. Okay, All right. ready. Yep. All right. Um, <clears throat> Zack... Our good boy mm-hmm. is trying to get Cloud back to Midgard. He's driving down the highway, right? right? And then Genesis, the man who looks like musical performer Gact, yes, shows up with one wing. At this point, by the way, much like Star Wars mm-hmm. uh, episodes four, five, and six, this is like episodes one, two, and three. And then in Star Wars, for example, the Emperor had force lightning or they had lightsaber fights. And Lucas was like, you know what? The kids want more of that. So they everyone had lightning in those first movies. Right. Everyone was jumping. Yoda was flipping around. It's that, but with angel wings. Mm-hmm. Yes. Everyone has one wing <laughs> and talks in weird like, this is the monster that I am. But man is the angel of the goddess's vision. And you're like, what does that mean? <laughs> what are you saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No All one poetry. explains anything. And so they're driving down the road and, and driving down the road, and then Genesis shows up with his one wing, and he looks like he's from Devil May Cry, but he's mm-hmm. also gacked right, from J Rock fame. Yes. And then he's like, he has goons that are clones of him grab Zach and hold him down to the ground. And the line read is, Ah, my hair. And then it shows them grab his hair. And then it, it cuts to <laughs> Genesis, and he reads a line. By the way, Genesis' is an, an entire character mm-hmm. is big. So in the original Final Fantasy VII, yeah. there's a poster in Midgar for a play called Loveless. Loveless has no real bearing on the story at all. Apparently, later in the game, Sid mentions something about it, but it, it's an unimportant thing. Right. It's just a background thing they put in the game. Well, it is Gax whole personality in this he is like there was a once a story called loveless about (laughs) three heroes and it's like all he talks about is that so he they grab zach's hair and he's like ow my hair and then he proceeds to say my hair they're eating my hair and the bad guys start Mm -hmm. eating his hair (laughs) it's the craziest thing oh. I've ever seen in mind. One of, one of the main plot points is that Genesis <laughs> always has an apple called a dumb apple. Not just an apple. It's a dumb apple. Okay. And he has it with him the entire time and he always holds it and talks with it. Later on in the game, you go to his hometown and it's like, yeah, he's the kid who thought it'd be smart to take apples and turn them into apple juice. The villain invented apple juice, Dodger. Invented apple juice. Right. Oh my God. Okay. Um, it is one of the craziest things. I only play this game because I was like, I can't, I want to get caught up on what the backstory was between Zach and Aerith, even though I know right. it because I played the first game. Like, I know it, mm-hmm. but like, all right, I want to see it. And I want to see what they did with the story between Zach and Cloud mm-hmm. and where that goes. And that is all in the game. Mm-hmm. Except it's so little in the game because you spend most of the time where Zach's like, I got to hang out with a buddy Sephiroth and also fight Angeal and also fight Genesis and also so, fight this doctor that I've never seen before. It's madness. So question. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, so this was. It was the year 2007. So it's all a product of the time. And it's mm-hmm. not. If, if you saw Final Fantasy VII Advent Children and you were like, what is the script for this movie? Exact same, exact same team. Right. It is insane yeah uh can can uh, i say something we all yes. hands yes. all hands on deck yes um about advent children specifically so weird backstory with me i i'm very sorry jesse i could never really get into final fantasy 7 final fantasy 10 is my favorite king of my heart i want to sure, try to play through all of rebirth and stuff again on my own time mm-hmm. soon but 
Um, Advent Children, for some reason, was my hyperfixation when I was a kid, and I would watch it every single day for months. Oh my god! I have seen Advent Children specifically. Advent Children. Yes, I have seen that movie so many times. It is ridiculous because it was like my parents were like, "You like Final Fantasy? Here's this DVD," and I'm like, "I'm gonna." That's my whole personality now for a while. It is. (laughs) It is again a product of the time in that this was when Square Enix was. Or I guess Squaresoft? I can't remember what they were at the time. Squaresoft, I think, still. I think um, they might have been still Squaresoft back then. Uh, but the but the, it was hyper-fixated on graphics and music over actual Everything story. Else. Yeah. And so it looks amazing, and I can watch some of the scenes in Advent Children a million times. They're very cool. But the story is is barely there, and the dialogue is like, Come, brothers. Let's do an unspecified task and not even elaborate on it. And then we'll be bad guys. And I'm like, <laughs> what the shit is happening in this movie? And it really didn't matter because when you're young, you're just like, yo, look at that sword, though. That fair. guy's cool. He rides a motorcycle. So yeah. yeah. And that is absolutely crisis core. It is. Mm. Everything's designed to be cool, look cool. Uh, everyone acts cool. But what comes out of their mouth is nonsense. <laughs> None of it makes sense. And what's crazy is time doesn't make sense either. Like there's a there's a scene where cl- like basically the end of Nibelheim for everyone knows Final Fantasy VII, that plays out in this game. And we see, I guess what really happens, but what's messed up about it is it literally does, some time, some time has passed, some time, like some unspecified time has passed and you and Cloud have been trying to get back, right? Since that moment. None of it's explained how much time has passed. You just know time has passed because mm-hmm. things look a little different. You get a letter later in the game that's like, it's been four years. I'm like, four <laughs> years? Are you kidding me? No, it's it's crazy. The whole thing's crazy. It's mm-hmm. like a wild, it's very much we have to say these things and do these things and put them in this. But I don't know, just cram it in. It'll fit in. And so right. it's it's interesting. I am glad I played it. It's definitely going to be the thing I talk about every time someone says, like, what's your least favorite Final Fantasy thing? I'd be like, let me tell you about Crisis Core. Oh, my God. So at least it's up there now forever. But um, Up there with Final Fantasy 13 and all Final Fantasy oh, 13 associated. I would say it's worse. I would say it's so much worse than 13. 13 stands out compared to this. Damn. What it, what it shows is that there was a – during – like, 13 was the last time they were, like – Style over substance. Because mm-hmm. once you get into 14, 15, 16, suddenly they're trying to tell stories. Doesn't mean that they're good. Like 15, the story is, uh, they just didn't finish the game. But like the scenes that are in it, at least characters talk to each other mm. mm-hmm. rather than talk at each other. And I, okay. I think they like there's a switch there that was flipped mm-hmm. in sort of like after 2010 gaming kind of changed. For the better. So, if anything, it made me appreciate Final Fantasy VII Remake so much more. Mm. Like, I can't, I was like, wow, I'm so pleased with the way writing has become lately. I know a lot of people are like, oh, everything's a movie now. Hey, thank you. Thank you, devs. Thanks for having (laughs) characters with feelings and emotions and like actual plot points and things. It's really nice and I love it. So, oh my gosh. Not, uh, Not to like, totally switch gears on what game we're talking about but i'm still playing a lot of banishers and Mm. the dialogue in that game i'm constantly while playing that game going god these people they feel like real people and i i just i love hearing them talk to each other and i love the way that they're written and their relationship and everything like i i don't get sick of except when i'm in the middle of a fight and ante is like I'm here too, you know. I'm like, shut up. I know. Anyways. Switch to me though. Switch to me. <laughs> oh my hey. God. Come on, switch. Hey. Oh, are you taking all the action? Yes, because this bitch has one hit left. Would you chill the fuck out? Anyways. Oh my God. She wants to help. <laughs> she just wants to help, dude. Yeah, that would drive me I, nuts. No spoilies. No spoilies. <laughs> no but, uh, spoilies. But uh, yeah, I think. I think the writing in Banishers stands out so much and it really, and it really is what you were just talking about where it's like, you really feel like these are fleshed out characters that have, you yeah. know, things that they want and things they need and like relationships mm-hmm. that preexisted before we were there. You know, it's very cool. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, For sure. I feel like if you're gonna make a game that's like a platformer or it's a like a roguelite or whatever, do whatever you want with the story. But if you're a story based game, you gotta sell the story. It can't just be like, I am the darkness in the goddess's farts. And you're like, I don't know what that means. Oh. What are you saying? What is Great. this? Happy and it's for like, it. well, if you play another God, 80 hours, you'll find out. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But if we're going back to old Final Fantasy stuff, I feel like Final Fantasy X does a really good job at doing story stuff and character that know each other before you show up. Pitch Final Fantasy X to people who have never given it a shot. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> I have, I, this is my Final Fantasy X tattoo to start off. I have one. What does it say? It just says, this is my story. I've wanted it since like I was in like early high school. I literally used to draw it on my arm because oh. I wanted it so bad. Can I tell you <laughs> I something? Love that you got I it wish, eventually. That's so good. I wish the tattoo said, people die and Yuna keeps on dancing. <laughs> people die, Yuna dances right on my arm. Have you seen that? Have you seen that video? It's my favorite video ever. It's the line, Yuna dies, or people die and Yuna keeps on dancing. That's from Final Fantasy X. Mm -hmm. It's the clip of her dancing from Final Fantasy X 2 in the outfit. Like, it, it's so funny. It's the best video I've seen on the internet. <laughs> That's awful. Oh, my God. Okay. My pitch for Final Fantasy X yeah. is basically one of my biggest pet peeves in games is when the exposition for the story and the world is really ham-fisted at you. And I think with Final Fantasy X, they implement why you have no idea what the hell is going on with the main character literally just not being from there. And so all the time, he's like visibly kind of like confused because he's just been... He basically got teleported from like New York City to like a freaking beach in the middle of nowhere and he's like what the hell is happening and um and so basically he's just there and um a lot of people are like living in the world around him and then look at him and are like oh my god fine this is what's happening and everyone is like visibly like annoyed that they have to tell him things because he doesn't <laughs> understand what's happening yeah and yeah. this doesn't feel it feels way more natural and it's one of my favorite stories i've ever played and it is very, I feel like you need to play it more than once to really, like, get how, like, deep a lot of, like, the scenes are. It has, like, some of my favorite characters, my favorite character arcs and character growth. And this is, like, probably not the most common thing, but Titus or Titus, the main character, is one of my favorite protagonists of all time. I love, I love him. My two favorite protagonists are both blonde teenagers, and it's Heather Mason and Titus from Final Fantasy X. <laughs> nice. And I think it's just great because he's just a douchey jock that is like has a heart of gold. He's like a golden retriever and he has to like save the world kind of vibe. And it's just my everything. And I will go to my grave saying the laughing scene is one of my favorite scenes in that game. I will <laughs> I say cute. every time someone asks me, I've mm -hmm. never played a Final Fantasy before. I know nothing about Final Fantasy. Where should I start? Because again, Every single game is different. Mm -hmm. yes. There is no like, this is the fun. So you could say go back and play one of the classics, right? Which mm -hmm. is cool, but it's old. And yeah. you could say you could try Final Fantasy VII Remake, but that you're not going to get as much out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every time, every time I say go play Final Fantasy X, it's like yeah. the perfect intersection of old and new. They've, re they've remastered it. Go back, play it. Mm -hmm. If it's your vibe... You'll love Final Fantasy. If not, yeah. then you won't like Final Fantasy, and that's it. Like it's that simple. It's the crossroads. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's great. It's the first like fully voiced Final Fantasy, so you don't have to read like a ton like with the old ones. Um, the voice acting is also great. Honestly, I think it's pretty fantastic. It's a really stacked cast, um, and yeah, I, it's just really fun. And there's Ten Two, which is a direct sequel, and it's like the first one that had a direct sequel right away because it did so well. And I think 10-2 is super fun. You just have to give it a chance. 10-2 is so fun. I played 10-2 and I hadn't even played 10 yet because my friend invited me over and was like, bro, I'm so into this game right now. 
And we just slammed it. We just played it the whole time I was there being like, we got to get all the costumes, dude. And yes. it was so fun. It was so good. That's the best part of the entire game. Look, 10-2 is insane story. <laughs> insane. <laughs> but Wild. the gameplay and the different dress spheres or whatever they are are so cool. I, yeah, it's great. That's, it's that's Magical the best part World of Final Fantasy. It is. It's it really is. so cool. And all yeah. of the dress spheres have like... There's the three main characters. All of the dress spheres have three different designs for all the characters that match their like vibe. There's like the special dress spheres that they have that are like, like magical girl mega mode. <laughs> and it's just, so it's fun. great. Yeah. It was so fun. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. it's such Everyone a weird... play lesbian road trip or I'll be mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it's such a weird way for them to have gone to you know what i mean like yes. final fantasy 10 comes out and it's just like allegory about religion and like you definitely attack and dethrone god in this one like that's the point and then mm -hmm. it's like final fantasy 10 2 the opening scene is like hello <laughs> let's call fans let's get dancing and then it's like a party you're like what the huh? hell is going on <laughs> yeah and what i realized is yuna was straight up just like basically a nun who found her groove and was like, no more of that. Thank you. And now is a party girl that I believe yeah. is the plot. It is. Okay. Well, I have, I have a more deep look at it of like, Oh, go, go you know, on. From birth was like, this is your journey and this is your calling. You don't have a personality. Like she couldn't even feel emotions, like a big part of ten. Like I, I can't feel, look like I'm sad because people are counting on me. Like right. I can't be myself. I can't feel my own feelings. I just have to be this like paper cutout of a perfect person for everybody. And then that was done. And she's like, who the hell am I? And then it's just her figuring out who she is mm -hmm. as an actual human being. <laughs> I love that. And it's that. really great. Yeah. I love those characters. My, I could literally talk about Final Fantasy X forever. So. <laughs> forever. That's just what I mean with Lulu. Specifically Lulu. I could talk about Lulu forever. Those belts were everywhere. You so many belts. So many. It was a dress made of belts. It also was a moment. So she did serve in those belts. Yes. Her outfit makes no sense for living in the South Pacific like that, but like, nope. uh, you know, whatever. She I'm looks sure like leather she mommies and, and yeah. She should live Indonesian in Indonesian like leather mommy. mommies. Yeah. I'm just realizing I've never asked Sam what his favorite fan of fantasy is. <gasps> I'm going to ask him right now. Please. I bet he's going to say nine. Mm, uh, that's common, yeah. I'm going to say he's going to say nine. Okay. Or if he's smart, he'll say six because he knows I'm here. <laughs> Is six your favorite? Yeah, yes, Jesse's far. favorite it's is six. six mine is seven, and yours is ten. This, it, your oh. favorite is six, and you want a seven ass masterpiece? <laughs> well, for the joke, yeah, oh, for the goof. Okay, but you yeah, could have, but, but you could have one ass cheek be the train. You could have the suplex on your butt. That's true. I could have. That's my favorite Rethink thing in any this. game: suplex in the train. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I take that. it back. From earlier, Dodger, I'm sorry that I couldn't get into seven. I thought it was Jesse's favorite. I didn't know yours. No, no, it's fine. I, I, th I think one of the things that's really fun about Final Fantasy is that they're all so different that there's a high mm -hmm. likelihood when you go to talk to somebody, they'll say a totally different game yeah. from you. Um, yeah. Like I have, I, mm -hmm. I have talked so much shit about eight. Uh, it's, it's a good game, but like it's so not for me. And mm. one of my really good friends growing up was like, but eight's the best one. You know, you just don't know. Like every, everybody, everybody has yeah. like their game that really touched them in some way, you know? Mm -hmm. That's because they all, they all relate to you in some way and they hit you at the right time in your life. Exactly. Like for me, the reason why I like, yeah, the reason why I like Final Fantasy VI is because it was the first time as a kid I played a video game that had a story that was deep, right? Mm -hmm. It like, it goes places. The whole point is about hope through immense despair like shit goes down in that game and mm -hmm. so um it's it's that and so like having it hit you as a kid and be like oh my god what a beautiful story that for me that's like it 
there are many other great stories. I know many people who play all the other games. Uh, eight, I can understand why. It's a love story. So I can understand why at a certain point in your life, that would be the one that got you, right? Yeah. Nine is literally about a child coping with death. I can understand I why that would resonate too. with people. Yeah, yeah, I can understand why that would resonate. Ten is very clearly like a coming of age tale uh, for the two main characters, both dealing with like a lot in their life. Like all of it works. Like, it, it, you know, <laughs> Even, I don't know what 12, 12 is, what, 12, I don't know what the <laughs> theme of, 12, I always like, yeah, it's Star Wars, everyone looks cool. I don't know what 12 is. I don't. 12 mm -hmm. is Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next. But it's cool. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Uh, Next. You know, I get why people resonate with 14 having played it. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. 15 is just boys out on a road trip, and oh, I get why that works. <laughs> I love those boys. I love them. The game <sighs> was not finished, but those boys, I love to death. I See, love them. That's what le got knocked me out of it, because I am I'm a little, little slutteroo for some open world stuff. So I'm like, ooh, open world Final Fantasy, I can just drive around. And then I'm driving around, and I'm like, there's nothing going on here. What's happening? Sure. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, okay i really Anyways, i really struggle with open world stuff um when there's too much to do so most mm -hmm. most of the time i steer clear of open world games because i think i'm gonna get overwhelmed and i'll never finish it or get enough out of it you know yeah that's fair that's my that's my worry with with rebirth mm -hmm. like there is oh so god I that's so true now i actually the reviews are out. about it <laughs> I can talk about this now. So I was, uh, I got to play some of it at an event. Okay. And when I was there, it, everyone around me is doing their thing, playing stuff. I might've spent two hours playing the card game. It was great, by the way. Queen's Blood is so much better than every other card game they put in any other game. I love it. Anyway, you, you, you have like chapter one, which is sort of like a welcome back to the game. And I think a lot of people played that probably from the demo. And then... There's a little kind of town portion, and then it pushes you into the open world. It's like, we got to go. And you're in the open world now. And what I did is the most Jesse thing I've ever done. You go through a little cutscene, and then you have a huge map. And I was like, yo, can I climb that? And I went and I climbed it. And I was like, oh, can I go over there? And I went over there. And I was like, oh, what's that thing? And what's that thing? And what's that thing? And then when I finally decided to get back on the story, it just sent me to all the places I had been. And I was like, I wasted so yeah. much time. Right. Doing. And I know that's how I'm going to do the entire game, which is insane. <laughs> but I will spend hours doing things just to do them yeah. rather than playing the game because that's how I am with open worlds. Mm -hmm. and, it, and what will end up happening, like always, and that's why I have to push through this, is mm -hmm. I will play 150 hours of walking around and never see the end and be like, well, I got what I wanted out of that. And then everyone <laughs> on the internet is going to be like, Jesse, no! <laughs> Uh, well, They're I, counting on you. It, it's true. It's hard too because I was I was talking about this with Banishers because Banishers is like open world light kind of, um, and uh, there were people in chat who were like, "Man, I've played this game for like fifty plus hours and I'm still not done with it." And I don't do well with really long games, especially streaming them. Sure. So I was like, what sucks about this is my inclination is to say, fine, then I'll just I'll just mainline the story, get the story done. And then all of the extra stuff I'll do off stream in my own time. Right. But you you have to be well aware of the fact that uh, the climb and difficulty is probably taking into account that you will do some st other stuff along the way and that the game is going to get more difficult for you to do in a timely manner if you're not doing side stuff, right? So it's like, let me, it's, it's let me hard. just say for Crisis Core going back, um, there are little side missions you can go on. Mm. And I did every single one of them to the point where I would go into combat with a boss and one shot them. <laughs> I was like, I love being overpowered. This is great. But I realized I was just wasting time doing this. I was like, this probably doesn't make for a good stream. So I just, Main line, this, the main story got to the final level and was getting destroyed. And I was like, this Aww. is why you don't move away from the plan, Jesse. This is why you always <laughs> level up early, man. So then I had to mm. run around. Because in Crisis Core, there is no level up system. A mm. slot machine has to hit 777 for you to level up. 
Right. So right. I was that running about sucks. running around in circles <laughs> for hours. I, in fact, I left. I, I I had dinner plans, and chat was like, "Just leave it on." So I went into one of the little battles against a low level guy because it's a slot machine and it random. And I just put the controller down and left for two and a half hours with the stream on. Chat, when I come back, are rooting for the guy trying to kill me. He keeps <laughs> missing me. And they're like, get him, Soldier G. And then he's <laughs> trying to attack me. And then I, I one slash him and he dies. And then uh, I'm like, so did I level up? They're like, you got one level 30 minutes after you left. That oh was my it. God. Oh, that was my it. God. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Sentry G was his name. Sentry G. That's for oh all the, the people out there. Yeah. That's so painful. So, yeah, I, I am, uh, I want to I see everything. I want to do everything. Mm -hmm. I want to go find the weird quests. Like, I'm yeah. trying to think of, uh, what was the, the Assassin's Creed that had Eivor, the one that was like Valhalla, right? Oh. So I started playing Valhalla when it came out, and I like hiked up into the mountains. I found a weird cave with some weird dudes and did a weird stuff, and I did all this stuff. I didn't touch. I don't know what that game is about, y'all. <laughs> I, I like did everything, but what? The, and I was like, you know what? That was a ton of fun. I'm done. I don't know. I don't think I know what the first story is. The main mission. Hmm. I couldn't tell. I just went around and did stuff. And that's what I'm worried about with this game and any other game. With like, it's open world. Like, cool. Yeah, love that. I will <laughs> never see what you want me to see. <laughs> yeah. Well, my. The only way I will play a good open world game is if there are fast travel points. So, like, you don't really yes. get as penalized for doing that. I'm going to run and jump and climb this because I do the same thing. I literally, I cannot count how many times I have gone and done a million things. And then I'm like, all right, time to go back to the main story. And it's like, all right, go do that same place. And I'm like, great. And there's no fast travel to get back there. But if you do that and then you can fast travel to where it wants you to be, that... It's so good. That's why I love like Elden Ring with all like the sites sure. of grace everywhere mm. where it's like it doesn't feel like you're penalized at all for just going off and exploring because it's like, oh, yes. I can now just have little like checkpoints everywhere. And that's like my favorite, which I I don't know if y'all are Soulsborne fans. Oh, are you excited about you saw the trailer and now you're hype as hell? <laughs> Excited. I yeah. think all of the DLCs are the best parts of every Souls game. Uh, every Souls game, the DLCs better than the main game to me so i'm very excited for elden ring because i feel like it just goes into exactly what i wanted to every time or it's like any like bit of lore that you're like oh my god that's really cool like i wish i knew more about that then the dlc comes out and it's like oh yeah this is all about that actually and i'm like <laughs> what, what's really funny about that is you're dead on is that uh i don't know maybe two or three days i saw someone post like yo we're going to get some Elder Ring DLC soon, y'all. And I was like, I wonder what loose threads there are. So I went and watched, like, mm. every video on YouTube about, like, mm -hmm. let's spend 16 hours talking about Mikola. And I'm like, let's go. And so <laughs> yep. when they dropped the trailer, I was like, <gasps> oh, here oh it my is. God. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. correct. I was like, they're doing this. They're doing it. I remember vividly. Playing because they mentioned Mikula and they're like, oh, my God, there's like that other sibling that we haven't seen. Where is this sibling? And then you find the sibling and you're like, that's that's it. I really I remember ending the game like, God, I really wish I knew more about Mikula. Like, mm. what happened to that? What happened to that kid? And now it's like, it's all about Mikula. And I'm like, everything. I could <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Elden Ring I, is I the cannot... only one that I did not. I haven't touched yet. I don't know anything about Ooh. it. I've managed to avoid everything about it because I still want to play it eventually. And I just haven't done it yet. It's good. It Real is. Good. It, it is the exact same thing we were talking about where you can just like ADHD your way through the world, <laughs> but that's the point. Right. Like yes. it is specifically designed for the ADD brain. Just be like, <laughs> yo, what's that? <gasps> what's <laughs> that? Oh, what's that? And everything's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so you're just like attracted to the beautiful things. And then near the beautiful thing is the worst thing you've ever experienced. <laughs> right. In your life. Is oh, just hell. Yeah. yeah. Actual hell. Yeah. Yeah, like Elden Ring I loved because it like <laughs> the rewards for exploration are like bosses, basically, and that there's yeah. so many ones that are not mandatory. There's like, I don't know, five mandatory bosses in the game or something, but like a yeah. hundred bosses in total, like wild. I think there's like maybe 60 something, but there's just so many that you can just find mm -hmm. just about and it's like some that are only like at certain times or whatever. It's like it just oh, rewards so you crazy. for running around for like. Of random times, right? It's 
I love so that. Good. And if if you make the world um, with enough like care and attention, yeah, mm-hmm. the player is gonna want to go everywhere. I felt that way playing Bloodborne mm-hmm. Pinocchio. It's just every, everything. Everything looks great. Slow. Oh, it's great. It's okay. I can't remember the actual Liza P. Liza <laughs> P. Yes, I know what you meant. Yeah, it's Bloodborne funny. Pinocchio. It's great. <laughs> it's so good. I didn't. I did not expect to love it as much as I did, but it wound up being, I think, my favorite game last year. Um, it was. It was just so good. There was so much more. Again, like love and attention put into it than I expected. Um, and the mm-hmm. fights were actually great, like so fun, all of the fights. So, yeah. Recommend. Yeah, I Bloodborne is my favorite Soulsborne game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've everybody that finds out I haven't played Lies of P is very shocked. And <laughs> I was like, you need to actually. Yeah. So. You'd love it, I think. Yeah. They sent me stuff. I still have it sitting in my room because I'm like, when I play it, I need to go through this again because they sent me like a funky little package. Aww. But I'm like. When they sent it to me, there were so many games. Like, I'm like, I literally don't even know when I can play this. So I'm yeah. going to. But, oh, my God. <laughs> Sometimes that's just the unfortunate, the timing of like, but yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really interested in playing this game. Oh, but these other games came out. I'm sure I'll remember to play them. <laughs> I'm sure I'll play them eventually. And sometimes you just forget or, no, or it's hard to find the time. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's rough, but hopefully soon I'll get to it. Cause yeah, yeah. I, you're the second person in the last 24 hours to like ra- rave about lies of P to it's me. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just watched people play it. Look neat. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those games where I was like, I literally don't have the time. So yeah. when I eat dinner, I'm just going to watch like Octo play mm-hmm. and it was fine. It was great. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Oh, that looks cool. Okay. Nice. Sweet. All right. You know, and and honestly, sometimes a game comes out and you're not saying that this is the case for you, but sometimes a game comes out and you're like, I just know I won't enjoy playing that. But I really mm-hmm. want to see what it's like and I want to watch somebody else play it. That's me with Last of Us. Whenever I tell people that mm-hmm. I I have not played Last of Us or the time that I did play it, I immediately stopped playing it because I just didn't like the mechanics. But I love watching people play it. It's a great story. It's a fantastic mm-hmm. game. Don't like playing it <laughs> at all. That's, yeah. uh, that's me with the, the brand new Pacific Drive. That's me. Mm. I uh, Really? You didn't, ever, you didn't like it? Did you play the demo? I played, I played the demo, and I realized that it's not the game that I wanted it to be. Mm. Where I'm, In my mind, I'm like, you're driving. It's going to be creepy. There's going to be like weird stuff. Like You got to go get something from your car real quick. Or you're going to get attacked by Ooh. something or whatever. And what ended up happening is playing through the demo, I realized it's mostly crafting. And Mm -hmm. I do not gel with crafting and inventory management. It just does not. So there were some moments where I was like, yo, this is so cool. But I don't want to play the rest of the game. So Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just going to watch someone play it. Someone who gets the crafting system and has that. And I'm like, cool, I'll just watch someone. Yeah, it just doesn't. I don't know. I'm not a big like minecraft hitting mm-hmm. things mashing things building things cool C- like combining materials to craft a thing i was like i hate this this sucks <laughs> and that's what pacific drive is it's that element added to a scary you're driving through a weird area game mm-hmm. and if you just remove that i would be like let's go i'm so excited to drive through and get scared but stopping and then looking for parts and then putting parts together i'm like this ain't this ain't for me. There's been a few games that I've been like, this is it. This game's gonna be great. And then they add a, a thing to the game that I'm like, this is one of those things I don't like. And yeah. now I can't play this game because I'm not gonna like this game. And that sucks. Yeah. It just is what it is. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just isn't yeah. a me game. And yeah, you know, there's so many people that play games on the internet yeah. for us yeah. to watch and enjoy. <laughs> so, Literally. I'll just go yeah. watch someone play it and I'll be like, Yep. Yeah, because they'll do better than me. They'll be like, here's all the crafting things. And I'll do this. And they won't spend 15 minutes trying to find one piece. Mm. And it's like yeah. right there. But your stupid ass is like around the corner. Like, why can't I get this? Dude, I played. Why the, can I get this? I played the entire demo for that game and never made a trunk. Never made like the trunk piece. And I kept insisting oh. like there isn't a trunk piece to make, guys. OK, so get off my asshole. And then someone was like, if you make a door. And you go to the, the trunk, 
it'll become the trunk door. And I was like, that's stupid. I hate that. <laughs> See, that would make me mad. So I'm glad you told me that that's how it works because I'm playing it next week and I'm really excited because I like spooky make stuff. A, make a door for the trunk. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. Don't get yelled at by chat trunk. like I did. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. No, but see this is why i love like content creators and people who post like gameplay because i can't play alien isolation it makes me have a panic attack mm. so i love it's literally one of my favorite games to watch other people play yes i tried to play it one time i wasn't even really in danger and i had a panic attack so it started off. i'm like you know what the way that this audio is is perfect to overstimulate and stress me out and i can't do it sorry yeah. and um, it's just no nope. Yeah, I watch uh, I, most scary games. I will watch Scary Game Squad. Shout out to Jesse. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'll watch Scary Game Squad play a lot of those games where I'm like, I will not like this. <laughs> I would mm -hmm. love to watch uh, Michael Davis or someone else scream their way through this. I do not want to be that guy. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, mm -hmm. I will say we just started playing Signalis and uh, <gasps> upload all that together, but that oh, game so slaps. That game's so what good. What a good game, right? Oh, wait, oh, oh wait. my gosh. Did you, did you start playing it after it updated and added more inventory and stuff? I don't know. I'm, literally, we started playing it last Friday, so I have no <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm okay. assuming yes. So Signalis is exactly my type of shit. It is like mm -hmm. old, like very Silent Hill inspired. Mm -hmm. I literally have a Silent Hill shrine in my office. I love it. I always like the whole time I'm playing it. The only thing that pissed me off is I was always one inventory slot short of being able to enjoy my time. And that <laughs> Signalis is a game that I had to drop because it we just like the inventory management was a little too restrictive. Mm -hmm. And so I mentioned it like last month, two months ago, and someone's like, oh, yeah, they patched it. And they literally added another inventory slot because it was such a common complaint that it was How like many? one inventory just slot. Need one more. Middle. Yeah. Yeah. How many slots did you have? Do you remember? Um, I think we I either think have five or six. I think I had like four. All right. That yeah, we definitely yeah, have more. They added two. Yeah, they added two. It's you used to have four, and I'm like, I can't. Like inventory management. It's why I didn't play Resident Evil for a very long time. Hmm. I'm bad. Yeah, it's, it's at six. It. It's the and there are posters that say, "Remember the rule of six: only carry six things on you at one time." So I that's think the rule of four, which is. Uh, it's it's still imagine. kind of a pain. Yeah. There's definitely parts where we keep having to run back and drop stuff off. It's very Resident Evil that way, but in like to the extreme, we're like, mm -hmm. okay, well, we need three key cards, but we, that means we have to get rid of three items. What? All right, well, like toss the healing, but we might need yeah. the healing. Well, don't yeah. fight anything, then go run. So it's that kind of game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's it has a vibe that is so very me, where it's like so good, weird stuff happening all the time, and you're just like. And what does that so even mean? much really yeah. cool lore all over the place to find and read. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Oh, I got so into reading everything I found and being like, oh my gosh. Okay. So this is what's happening with it. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Signalis is very like, everybody shut up. We have lore to read. And then everyone was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. It was so, so solid. I'm so, so excited cool. to watch you play because mm -hmm. I actually really need to try to play it again because I got to like the end of it and I'm like, I'm tired because then it's like you have to pick up too many objects and like some of the useful objects in the game, like the like tools counted as inventory slots before, mm -hmm. which isn't the case anymore. So yeah. it was like you could literally carry one object or two. And it's just like. I would just we found a shotgun, so like everything dies now. Everything. Before we were running nice. from things, like trying not to say, now a shotgun is all shotgun firing and murder. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, game, story. beautiful story Love yeah. i was so no no spoilies i was so just like emotionally wiped by the end of that game that mm -hmm. somebody in chat was like oh you know if you load your last save and do x y and z then you'll get something different i was like no <laughs> I'm not doing. I'm not doing that right now. I can't, I can't. I'll just go watch the other endings. I can't. I can't do it. Right now. So yeah, very good game. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. very good. I would highly recommend it for sure. Yes. Yeah, I think it's. It was like the perfect because there's definitely games that are that are too kind of like what you were saying, Ashley. Just like too stressful 
to like just too much, you know, yeah. too many things chasing me. I don't have enough agency, you know, whatever. There's there's a type of game that I do not enjoy that way. Signalis, I think, was the perfect amount of like stuff's chasing you. Things are tense. You know, uh, it's a really serious game, but not it wasn't it wasn't overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. I just yeah. thought of something that I don't know that I can share, but I'm going to share it anyway. Oh. Um, <laughs> what does that mean? In what way? What are you talking? What do you mean? <laughs> so you were you were talking about how um uh you know, there's some games that are too like a little too much, a little, yeah. right? And I just had the epiphany of like the polar opposite, which was uh this past week for reasons that I can't explain yet, I recorded a bunch of uh Yakuza stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, I'm just gonna say most of it was the rock paper scissor girl fight the cat fight match okay <laughs> and I realized that's the most Jesse Cox thing that ever exists it's perfect it's perfect it is rock paper scissors with no discernible skill required and then in the background people just beating the shit out of each other in bikinis and it's <laughs> hilarious in the best way and I cannot stress to you how much I enjoyed it. I spent so, too much time. And if you need someone to back me up on this, the internet's Kristen will do so. Because mm. she was there watching it happen. And I was like, Kristen, this is the best thing I've ever played. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. I realize I need all my games to have no real challenge. And mm. just be like, I don't know. Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball. I think that's the game I need to play. Bro, I think I've discovered my genre. I, that game, you saying that game out loud mm -hmm. uh, has just thrown me back in time. I spent so <laughs> much time playing that game. I have a very funny story to tell about that game. Do, please. I adore that game. Um, so... For those of y'all who might not know, I am a bisexual woman. Mm -hmm. Um, that game came out when I was a child. Um, I don't remember how I learned of its existence, but I just saw pretty ladies on the cover, and I'm like, I want to play this. I was in Future Shop, which does not exist anymore. It was in Canada, basically like oh, a best Future pack. Shop. Wow. Um, and uh, <laughs> I was with my dad, and I'm like, yeah. Dad, can I get this game? And he looked at it, and he looked at me. He's like, you want to play this game? And I'm like, mm-hmm. And he's like, okay. And then took it to the counter. And the guy was like, he looked at my dad, and then he looked at me, and he looked at my dad, and he's like, gave him a weird look, because he's buying Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball with his right, daughter. With his kid, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. um, for yeah. him, he didn't know that. Um, and then I realized I played that so much. And then I hit a point when I was a teenager, I'm like, I really didn't know earlier, huh? When that was one of my favorite games. To <laughs> there were, it was, I, one, uh, it's one of those, there were signs. There were signs. <laughs> there there yeah. were signs. <laughs> yeah. That was one of those games like Rumble Roses that I didn't own mm. because I'm a fake and I was trying to keep up appearances and I didn't want people to judge me. But I had a friend who did and I borrowed the shit out of it. <laughs> Nice. And I'd be like, I got you a game, man. It's not as dirty as you think, mm. but it's dirty enough that you will be judged. Just like that guy was judging your dad. <laughs> you <laughs> will be judged. Dude, I, um, yeah, my brother and I played that game so much and I kept not, there, there are specific uh, swimsuits in that game that are very mm -hmm. racy. And I kept being like, well, I can't buy this. I can't buy those. Oh, my gosh. And then uh, a friend came over and we were playing games and we put that game in. And he was like, why haven't you bought these yet? And I was like, be I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And he was like, don't be a coward. Buy them. And that's and then I wound up buying all the rest of the swimsuits in the game that I had kept being like, I can't buy yeah. those. That's so good. God. So that Fucking game. Yeah. Someone uh, in chat, did Jesse ever play Lollipop Chainsaw? Lollipop Chainsaw is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. On paper, oh. it is a game that I should love. 
It has every goofy trope that I'm into, plus mm -hmm. sexy, sexy ladies. Here's the thing. I did not like the gameplay at all. <laughs> and, and you can't sell me on sexy ladies if I don't like the game. I have to play your game to get to sexy bits. Right. It's too much work. <laughs> like Bayonetta, a lot of fun. I play Bayonetta. I get to see her show up in like hair outfits, and I'm like, nice. And then I get to have more fun. For some reason, Lollipop Chainsaw didn't do it for me. I, you know, but it was the gameplay, not the game. That's right. what it is. It is what it yeah, is. It is what it is. This is like when uh, I tried to play one of those um, sexy lady Mahjong games. And then it was like, here's how to play actual Mahjong. And I was like, oh, no. Oh. I, can't, I can't learn actual Mahjong just to see hot ladies. I can't do it. That's so, that's so much. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Damn it, they put Mahjong in my boob game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I thought it was going to be, you know, like the, the Windows 95 Mahjong, not real Mahjong. Mm -hmm. Come on, and guys. For anyone yeah. out there who thinks Dodger is lying to you about <laughs> any of this, I want to let you know that, I don't know, maybe like two or three years ago, on my screen, you know how it sometimes shows you what friends play on Steam? For like a month straight, Dodger had a game activated. And I couldn't figure out what this game was. And I realized it was basically a booby clicker. It was. And she just left it on to get as many points as possible. And yeah. I was like, that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's doing it. I left, yeah. I left it open while I went on vacation. Yep. Because I was like, this is the play. I'm just going to leave it open the whole time I'm out of town. And when I came back, I was severely disappointed at how much income I had accrued over a week of being gone. Mm -hmm. And I did complain about it. So mm -hmm. this is when mm -hmm. we were, we were side by side when, when that was going on, we were in, true. in side by yeah, side yeah. offices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And if you're wondering, Jesse, how do you know what type of game it was? Well, I saw her playing it, went and clicked the game, saw it, and was like, yo, downloaded and bought the game. Look, there's no, this is a judgment-free zone. <laughs> then when I played it, I was like, this game sucks. But yeah, they got my $2.99, so <laughs> good on them. It wasn't good, yeah. As, as many idle games typically aren't mm -hmm, very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, yep. the good ones are so rare and pure. Um, I'll always try them though. <laughs> Love it. Look, I appreciate it. I've also mm -hmm. look, I have I have yet to find an idle game that I actually enjoy for more than like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I always they always just like lose me. So if you have any recommendations, even if they have boobs, I will take them. <laughs> there's there's a cute there's, it does, there's no boobs in this one. I'm so sorry. That's but fine. uh that's fine. There Trash. is a haunted house one. Oh my gosh, what is the name of it? I'll take that look. It can be boobs or scary or both. I'll take it. <laughs> what? Chat, what is the name of that haunted house one that I played on stream for so long? <laughs> Realm Grinder? Oh. What is that? Oh, it's like you're grinding out a realm. Oh, oh! I used to play Melvore Idol, but I like played it when it was in beta, when you can access everything, and then it came out full release, and then made me pay for it. And I'm like, like I'll pay for it, but you're gonna have to catch me on my computer, and they never do. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Now that you got me, now you got me down the rabbit hole. Oh, Loop Hero is a bit idle-ish. Yeah, Loop yeah. Hero is really good. Oh, I don't, I don't know. It, mm. Oh, I saw a lot of people playing Loop Hero for a long time, but I didn't know anything about it. There is a game, oh. uh, called Oh man, it's right up, it's right up your alley. Infinite Craft. Have you played this, Dodger? Oh Infinite my god. Craft? I need to play I don't it think too. So. It's this it's it's, it's so the good. Neil Fun guy who makes all those other games that I love. Um but this one is where you craft things in your it's like just a like you play it online game 
and you mix elements together and the elements become one thing. And then you mix that with something else to become something else. And you can mix that with something else to become something else. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what the goal of the game is, but it's the most Dodger game I've ever seen in my entire Wait, life. Wait, is it like is it like a souped up version of those those phone games that are like you're running a yeah, cafe? Put no, the coffee grounds God. together no. to become the coffee cup to become the no no. no. Did you ever play is... Doodle God where you have the four elements and then you just like swipe them together to make new elements? No. It thinks it's literally Doodle God, but with just everything that you could ever think of to come out of it. What's it called? Like, Infinite. Like... Uh, it's craft. called uh, Infinite Craft. It's on Neil.Fun's page, which, by the way, oh. mm -hmm. Neil.Fun is hero level stuff. Just everything on there is amazing. Okay. But um, literally, it would be like, okay, you combine fire with water, steam. And then you combine steam with uh, earth, right? And that'll <laughs> give you something, right? And, that, and maybe it gives you like swamp. Right, so then you have a swamp, and then you combine, and you keep combining to the point where it's like combine man with swamp, and then it becomes like swamp thing, and then it's like okay, <laughs> okay. combine swamp thing with uh zombies, and then it's like you know it just keeps building and building and building. It's pretty mm -hmm. goofy. It's pretty fun, and there it's definitely amazing. appears to be a stopping point. I just don't know what the hell it is. Scream collector. Is the is the one that I oh, love. Thank you. That's it's, fun. It's very cute. You just like build up a haunted house over time. Thank you, chat, yeah. for reminding me of the name of that. And yeah, with is, I mean, this, craft? Is, this is what I'll say. Oh. Uh Duke's on the screen. Yes. I went to, to Octo's stream of it. <laughs> and uh he has on his screen, somehow he has achieved um <clears throat> Super Jesusaurus 26. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. for some reason, Goku. Are, oh, and Civil War I are all it. on his screen. I have no context. I just okay. know that he created all of those, and so that's the thing you can do. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want everybody to know that. So you can get first discoveries if you're the first person ever to make this word come up. And um, my one of my my first first discovery I got was 6.9 million viewers with an eyes emoji. My first first discovery was a 69 joke. Amazing. <laughs> I love that. Yep. yep. It's, it's great. Beautiful. Fitting. <laughs> Poetic. Anything. Yeah. yeah. Poetic, yeah it rhymes. It rhymes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very. Uh... I do love it. <laughs> he had nice. Super Saiyan Abraham Lincoln at one point. That's, That's what I'm sick. saying. Oh, That's yeah. I can't do anything. But I don't know what the point of it is, but I guess just for goofs, you know? Yeah, it sounds like it. It's just goofs. Like, you just kind of come up and just get a bunch of different things. Like, I like to try to go for, like, video games I like or TV shows and stuff and just get all of the characters. <laughs> like, I get all the Silent Hill games and everything and Kingdom Hearts and the cast of Kingdom Hearts and all that. Ooh, so you could like combine fog with hills or fog with town and maybe get Silent Hill. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, exactly how I got it, but it was very similar to that. It was like fog and like mm. horror, maybe, or like fog mm. and like video game. <laughs> but yeah, sure. it's awesome. Great. Super fun. Um, oh, it. there it is. I will try it. I, my crowning achievement, one of them, was I got Sharktopus, Sharkacane, Sharknado. I don't. No. Now, Sharktopus really is truly a fearsome creature, which I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Sharknado I get, but I'm sorry, a shark cane? Shark a cane, like a hurricane with sharks. Mm. <laughs> that actually makes a lot more sense than a Sharknado, for sure. Yes. Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, yeah, it's, I just, it's just better, easier to say Sharknado. Shark a cane, yes. you're not selling that movie. No. You know what I'm realizing in this moment? I I don't I don't feel uh I don't feel too bad saying this out loud. Um oh. please. I don't know exactly what a hurricane is. Like I can imagine a tornado, but I'm not entirely sure what a hurricane is. Is a it, it's in also wind-based, correct? <laughs> yes. But it's also there's it's because the wind like all right, what is your what is your question besides the fact What's that you just don't know what it is <laughs> it's a water tornado basically they just a form water a tornado ocean. it's a tropical storm that reaches a high enough speed over water that it begins to suck up the water mm -hmm. as it moves 
uh, towards land. And then when it makes landfall, it dumps all that water on people. Oh, and it's shit. terrible. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's why they dissipate on land like fairly quickly because they lose a lot of the water power because they can't pick up anything else. Um, but yeah, but then okay. it devastates places with all the ocean water. Right. Yeah. Tornadoes are also a wind wall that's very like, it's a little funnel that's very, mm -hmm. very thin. And unless you get an F5, the finger of God, right? That's shout out to all my uh, Twister fans out there. But the hurricane is a storm. And so when the storm picks up enough speed, and storms are not like a little funnel. Storms are huge. And so I think it might be possible to get tornadoes in hurricanes. Mm. Mm. I don't know if that's true, but in theory, it could be possible, right? Is that Could we do that? Could they do that? I feel like. So a hurricane's huge, and a tornado's like a little tiny baby boy. Yeah, hurricanes and tropical storms can produce tornadoes. Yep. They most often occur in thunderstorms embedded in rain bands well away from the center of the hurricane. However, they can also occur near the eye wall. The finger of God. The finger of God. Okay, right. thank and you. And it killed that poor that old is... lady. I, my, oh, no. my conception of a hurricane was just big wind basically so uh, thank you for helping me <laughs> specify what it actually is that was very helpful i learned most I'm of it from the, from the 90s movie twister uh the story about a man who brings his ex-wife or maybe estranged wife on a trip with him and his ex-wife to go chase tornadoes right that with a crew of characters who almost all of them became like big time actors it's weird it's a weird film <laughs> Storm. Oh, I gotta go with look. CG tornadoes. Nice. That's my favorite. Yep. Huh. Twist. See, hot dog. Yep. Oh my gosh. Wow, there is a lot. This is stacked. This cast is stacked for Twister. That's what, what I'm the? saying. What? People are saying Twister sequel is coming out soon. Ah. That, how is that possible? I how is that even possible? It's like they're still another, chasing tornadoes. All these, I think one. half the cast. It's not like is the dead. tornadoes have gone away. It's yeah. It's just going to be day after tomorrow, but with a tornado. Mm. <laughs> Which new I love. That new movie. tornadoes, same problems. You know. It's called Twisters. Yo, are the aliens in it? See if they're smart. The Twister brings the aliens and it's Twisters, and they fight them. The Marines fight them. Sure. That's why I like I aliens better than alien. Day after tornado is perfect. Yeah. Day after Day tornado. After tornado. <laughs> Technically, that's most of the original I've Twister. I that. Yeah. That's amazing. Have, have either of you guys played Helldivers? No, I have, but I really no, want I to. I haven't played it either. I, I played want it either. to. It looks fun. It looks like a really fun thing to do with, like, pals. With friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really want to play it for mm -hmm. sure. It feels like every time I go, you know what? I'm just going to sit down and play that. Uh, the servers are down. So <laughs> I feel like that's mm. kind of every time I've heard that's like I was really into it. And then I started seeing that like nobody could get in. And I'm like, I'm not going to buy it until I know that I can actually play it. Yeah. It's one of those like if I buy it and I can't get in, I'll never play it because then I'll just give up. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Sam's really into it. Mm. Um. Uh, yeah, apparently it's really fun. So I would love I would love to. I would love to play it. I just don't necessarily want to play it by myself. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. A game that just came out yesterday that's really fun to play with friends. A Sons of the Forest came out full release yesterday, last night, and it's so good. I what don't know if y'all played The Forest back like oh, 10 yes. years. The, the horror game. Yeah. 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 It's the sequel. So it's just that, but like better i guess there's just like cooler oh. mechanics and was, base building and stuff was the forest co-op no right yes it was it could, yeah it was solo and co-op yeah i oh played the forest co-op a lot and sons of the forest is also pretty fun and yeah so i started playing the full release last night and it's honestly pretty solid nice that is, just another example there's just too many damn games oh there's so, so many games dude, for mm -hmm. real yeah yeah you can only have so many on your radar even like there's so many games that come out and I'm like, 
I don't even know. I don't know what this is. But so many people are, like, super mm. excited about it. I'm like, I've never heard of this game because mm. I just don't have the bandwidth to pay attention to everything. I I have a list on my desktop that keeps growing of games mm. that I definitely want to play. And so I was like, okay, this entire month is me getting stuff out of the way so I can play Final Fantasy VII and just pound it out. And then I saw that the minute March starts, there's a bunch of other games that I want to play. I'm like... Oh no! <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and some of them are just like silly indie. Like I really want to play Goblin Stone when that comes out. It looks like I'll just play with a bunch of Crendors, and I'm so excited. <laughs> that game literally looks like I manage Crendors entire life. Right, it's so cute. I want that. All right, mm -hmm. but then it's also like, bro, remember Dragon's Dogma too? So I got, I'm gonna yeah. have to play that. But also there's things like Overlord Unicorn, and there's the new. Alone in the Dark, and there's like all these games coming out. I'm just like, oh, Alone in the Dark comes out next month. Oh God, okay. So I'm saying there's so much happening. <laughs> oh, that's just what I can remember. God damn it. <laughs> that's I'm so excited. I love a game where I can just dress people up in pretty outfits. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I that's a trope that I've missed so much is like when you go to different like worlds in a fun little like platforming adventure game, you get a different outfit everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. I miss that so much. I'm so excited for Princess Peach Showtime. Yeah, oh, God, I'm so excited. I'm such a any any game, regardless of the genre. If you can like buy an outfit or whatever, and it reflects on the actual character, I love that shit. I love it so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it's uh, my favorite. Chat, if you Overlord Unicorn viewer, hi. Over if you have hi. a Switch, go download the demo. Just if you're a big Fire Emblem fan, you'll love it. You'll love it. So there you go. That's easy. People nice. ask me what that is because it sounds like a crazy name, but it's just a it cool a looking game. It's a it's game. It's a good game. Yeah, it's, it's a, a game. It's a game. Yeah. Get it today. But yeah, it's too much. There's too many games. And, uh, I have all these games that I start and then I'll play for like 50 hours and then be like, well, I got to move on. And then I'll see a comment that's like, Jesse, you never finish anything. <laughs> It's not my fault. This is why I okay. don't play long games. I, yeah, have, I hecked up starting Banishers, dude. Uh, I'm, typically, I'll look up a game and be like, how long do most people spend on this game? 10 hours? Okay, so with me being a Gabby bitch, I'll assume it's like 15 for me. As long as it's under 15, I'll still do it. <laughs> if it's more yeah. than that, I'm screwed. Yeah. Well, that's just the thing. It's hard to play every game that comes out because so many of them are like 100 hours long. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't have the time because basically, like, I feel like for most of us, I feel like the most I play games is when I'm doing it for content. And I only have certain hours in the day that I want to be making content. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I don't have time to play 18, 100 hour games at the same time. I'll just disappear. Yeah. It took uh, me. 200 hours to get through all of Baldur's Gate 3. I've been playing since August and I'm still not I, done my first save because I play it with a friend and we play it for content. And so, I have yeah. four saves. One has like 120 hours. One has 70. Mm. I have two bonus funds. Like, here's the thing. Here's how one, here's how you know that I'll play your game. Does it require the bare minimum of skill? Baldur's Gate 3 is a lot of talking with RNG roles. Mm -hmm. I don't really have to be good at video games to play that. And it is why I finished your game. Because <laughs> I don't have to, like, grow in skill. I don't have to get better at it. I literally just have to roll and be like, damn. I guess I'll reload. <laughs> like that, it is. And, and the playthrough I'm doing right now is I'm not even, I'm not doing that. So I'm just accepting the roles. I do nothing of value and it's great. And I need more games to just understand. I'm, I'm not good anymore. Or maybe I never was good at games and that's fine. Just let me roll a dice and give me some numbers that say I'm good. And that's it. What that's all I want. What was fun for you before might not be fun for you now. It's okay yeah. to evolve as a gamer. Exactly. I don't you know that I've time. evolved. I think I'm just ex embracing my, the truth of who I am. I was just like, you know, maybe I'll just play 
Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on easy, so I can do get it. through it. I'm like Why I don't even not? care. Oh, I'm gonna. I <laughs> yeah. have no. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna plow through that game. God, this that's like great. what I what I say all the time now. Whenever I change difficulty, well, a first off, you can play a game on whatever difficulty you want as long as you're having Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Who cares? Next. I put in the time. I don't care. If I'm struggling with something, I'll look up the puzzle solution. If I'm like, if I'm not enjoying t- the process, I don't care. I don't want to ruin my experience for it. I'm like, I did my time really trying really hard with video games, okay? Yeah. I just want to have fun now. <laughs> so yes. I don't care anymore. I've also taken no, that stand. I used to, I used to really, and I still do sometimes if I'm playing a puzzle game, I'll sit there and yeah. really beat my head against the wall. But like, yeah, my stance on it is... I will keep beating my head against the wall as long as it's fun. If it's really yeah. fun for me to try to figure out, I'll spend a ton of time on it. If I hate this goddamn puzzle and I can't wait for it to be over, I will one I'll look up every hint. What mm-hmm. what does the game give me? I'll read every single hint. Do I still not get it? I'll look up a playthrough. I don't care <laughs> shit. I just want to no. move on. Yeah, 100%. Hi, Jesse hey. Cox Crisis Core Survivor here. Um <laughs> I want to let you know. Yeah. This sucked. This was the worst. Yeah. There's a, in the Shinra mansion, there's a puzzle mm-hmm. that Zach has to do. And it's find a safe code. Okay. And in order to get the safe code, you have to look into rooms, like look through the keyhole and see spot different items. And one of them is like, find the ghosts. And one of them is like, uh, count the chairs. And the problem is that sometimes the ghosts appear and then disappear. So you never really know how long you're supposed to look. And sometimes it feels like, well, am I getting all the ghosts? Like, what's the... What? And so I was eventually pissed because I couldn't figure it out. And I went online. And chat is just laughing, having a good time. I went online, looked up. I was like, screw it. I just looked it up. And all it did was explain which rooms to look in. And I was like, well, what the hell, chat? This I was like, IGN, your guy's shit. And they were like, no, Jesse, don't you understand? It's random every time. And I was like... No! So I had to no, sit there. No, the worst. <laughs> it, yeah. was, it was truly the worst experience. I was like, so what do I look for? And there was like, make sure to count all the apples. So I'm looking around the room trying to count apples. And the apples are dark purple in a room that's brown. And I'm like, well, they should stand out. But they're hitting me. I just, I can talk about this game. And I'm going to talk about it till I die. It, it scarred me in my soul. <laughs> I just. <laughs> I'm so. so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's so painful. Yeah, but okay. now you Meanwhile, get to share Signalis. this painful experience with us. Yeah. So that's good. Yo, I just. Oh yeah, I'm like the guy from Star Trek Five. The the guy who's like share your pain. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a deep cut. That is that's a, a deep, deep cut, cut for kids. Holy oh shit! Share your pain. I was like, Spock's I can't brother. even remember which. You yeah. know, Spock's brother. Yeah, the, the, fuck. The, what's the, his name? What does God need with a starship? Yeah, yeah. that guy. It's yeah, like, oh, you share your pain. That's me, but with all of you. <laughs> anyway, that was a deep cut. <laughs> That's beautiful. Congratulations to the forty five and up crowd who <laughs> got that joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Um. All right, it's about time that we start wrapping up, but Ashley. Yeah. We, we didn't give you a heads up about this. I'm so sorry. Oh, but at the end of every episode of Geek Enders, we ask our lovely guest to okay. give chat homework. We would like for you to, to tell them a show, a movie, a game, a book, a comic, whatever that you think not enough people give credit, something that you think everyone should give a shot? Mm. Oh, God. Okay, it can hold be something on, no. we talked about today as well. If, if, you know, it can be anything you want. Um, yeah, you know what? I think I would... You know what? No, this is really out of left field, but I feel like so many things that we talked about today are inspired by it. If sure. you haven't watched Twin Peaks, at least watch the pilot. I also am a big Twin Peaks fan. <laughs> good call. So good. Literally, if if you once you start watching Twin Peaks and are aware of it, if you watch any behind the scenes of anything that exists, most of the time it'll be like I'm also inspired by Twin Peaks. It literally everything. Ridiculous. I think this yep. is this is two people now who have told you to watch really? Twin Peaks. Yeah. So 
you should do it, Chet. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. Yeah, but it's one, if it's, that's then whatever. There you go. Congrats yeah. on finishing your homework already. <laughs> it is absolutely one of those things that when you watch it, you'll realize how much it inspired. The only other thing that I can think of that even comes remotely close to things it inspired is the movie The Crow. When you oh go watch goodness. that, the crow. you'll be like, oh my God, so much stuff was taken from this movie. Yep. It's weird and wacky, but like it is. It is what it is. And uh, <laughs> same thing with Twin Peaks. Just so mm -hmm. much stuff is stolen from Twin Peaks. Mm. So much. Like all of the way that the voice acting is in Silent Hill 2, the entirety of like Alan Wake 1, the whole beginning basically, mm -hmm. so much. Lost was inspired by Twin Peaks like everything mm, yeah. so good so beautiful also before if after like i've given homework can i brag one time because i talked yeah. about how i like to play games on easy can i talk about my most prideful gaming moment yeah um i bring this up it was a while ago that i did this um because you can only do this i guess one time you only get one shot <laughs> i first tried orphan of coast from bloodborne the uh, first time i ever did it i mm -hmm. kicked his ass and I have video evidence of it, so nobody can say that I'm a liar. Um, right. But that's just my, that's my most, my proudest moment in gaming. Nice. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> I love it. Damn. With the hair flip as well, I love yeah. it. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause. Thank that's you. genuinely impressive. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you, along with this, this awesome detail about yourself, would you like to mm -hmm. tell everybody where they can find you and what you do? Surely. All right. Hi, I'm Ashley, Ashley Roboto. I'm from Ontario, Canada. Um, I kind of stream whatever I want. I really love horror stuff. I play a lot of horror games. Um, I also put some stuff on YouTube, but really into Soulsborne, really into horror. I'm actually finishing Silent Hill Origins for the first time because I hate it and I haven't <laughs> finished it yet. Um, but... Yeah, if you like spooky stuff, uh, some cozy stuff, a lot of retro. Um, I'm also doing uh, Majora's Mask Randomizer right now, which is really fun. But yeah, I'm really into weird story and creepy story stuff. So like, I'm super also into the Remedy verse. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically my favorite. If you can give me anything that like will creep me out and throw some weird curveballs at me. Good. Which, Jesse, I feel like I want you to recommend more games to me because I feel like we have the same taste in those kind of games. Pony Island. I feel like I've heard of that. Pony. Yes, I did. Island. I did. I did. Uh, yes, I have. I have played Pony Island, which is also really, really fun. Mm, okay, because Pony Island 2 is coming. So brace your Ooh. butt. Oh, that's exciting. But yeah, no, Pony Island is perfect because I love creepy, weird shit. Hidden in cute stuff. Because that's mm. that's the best. That's fun. the best. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Inscription also a banger. Yes. Yeah, I, I imagine if, if you've played Pony Island, you definitely play Inscription. Mm -hmm. So like I've played, that, I wouldn't I've even ask. Most of it. I I played Inscription up to a point. And then didn't oh, enjoy it I know anymore. exactly what that point is too. Yeah. I uh, I don't feel like I need to expand because anybody who no. played the game probably knows exactly what point I'm talking about. <laughs> I just realized something. Dodge, you need to back me up on this. <clears throat> okay. Dear sweet Ashley. Oh, okay. Have you delved into the Rusty Lake universe? Okay. I have done one game with a friend, the oh. one that's a like co-op, the box. Yes. And I know that she jumped off and went deep into Rusty Lake. And I know I would love it. You so should I also need to do that next. Go, go deep, deep into Rusty Lake. Go in. Yeah. Imagine multiple games that tell the story of a family but not in any order oh. and you got to figure it out yourself and it is bonkers if you want to if you want to go on the journey in the direction that jesse and i did you'd start with rusty lake hotel okay that's cool. such a good start because it's so out there it's so yes. weird that's yeah I love You'll it. Be like what is this perfect great mm -hmm. Beautiful. most of the games are either Super cheap or free. And so yes. bless yeah, these deaths. Great. Love them to death. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. All fantastic. right. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. Then I will I will check them out. Thank you so much for joining us, Ashley. 
Thank you for inviting me. I had such a fun time. Yeah. I adore you both very, very much. So it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, yeah, guys, definitely go follow Ashley. She's legitimately so funny and really fun to watch. So thank you. Go, go say hi. Go follow. Uh, and that's it for Geek Enders today. Jesse, do you have anything that you want to round off with? It's the weekend. Chill out. Don't do anything too crazy. If you have chores and stuff, you know, do them, but don't make it your weekend. Take time to relax, baby. Take time to chill. Take time for yourself. Absolutely. Have a Beautiful. fantastic couple of days. We will see you guys again on Friday. And hey, if you showed up like halfway through this and you were like, that was so fun. I can't wait to watch the VOD. It will not be here. It'll be on youtube.com slash Jesse Cox. That's where all of the Geek Enders are. So if you're curious what everybody else's homework was uh, and at what point I decided that the homework was no longer for me and Jesse, but was instead for you. <laughs> when did that happen? When did that injustice happen? You're going to have to watch. You're going to have to watch yeah. all the last episodes to find that out. <laughs> lore. Lore, lore, There's lore. lore exactly. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. You know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger. So give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger. So give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe While we catch you up in just a matter of time On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in Thank you for sharing our world with us Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up Yo, it's Come the on. weekend Yeah, it's time to geek out Let it begin Go on, stream and shout It's Jesse and Dodger So give them a follow, number one geek podcast